everyone, it's been a few weeks since my last Marvel Legends action figure review and today I'm going to jump in with the retro carded Wolverine figure. Now, as we all know, it is of course the X-Men's 60th anniversary this year and Hasbro are releasing a number of special releases to celebrate. And at the very tail end of last year, we got a wave of retro-carded X-Men figures. I took a look at about three or four of those at the time, but one I neglected to cover was Wolverine. Now, we've had plenty of Wolverine variants across the years, but this is one I've long wanted because this is Wolverine in his team colours from issue 275 of Uncanny X-Men. I always quite like it when the X-Men have matching uniforms, as much as I love their individual looks. I, there's something about that that I just really, really like. So I've always really wanted to have a Wolverine figure like this, and I'm really pleased to say that Hasbro, of course, have released the other figures of the characters on this very famous cover across two separate sets. And if I'm lucky, I'll be able to take a look at those figures in a later video. But back to Wolverine, let's take a look at this packaging. Of course, it is a retro card, harking back, of course, inspired by the early 90s Toy Biz X-Men figure line. A toy line that's very close to my heart. It was my introduction to these characters along with the animated series, and I absolutely loved these toys as a kid. So seeing this artwork again after all these years and seeing this design and layout is absolutely fantastic. Likewise, if we look at the back of the packaging, we can see they've kept that similar design and aesthetic and layout that the old Toy Biz cards used to have. We have a little bit of bio about the character at the top of the box there underneath the Wolverine descriptor. And then on the right hand side, we have the other figures that are available in this wave. Uh, so this is pretty consistent with what we used to get. And I always loved this as a kid and I still love it now. I think it's very tremendously exciting to see the other figures that are available in a wave. Out of the packaging, the figure on first impression looks a little bit bit bulkier uh, than we usually get for Wolverine figures. He looks a little bit stockier and a bit more muscular, but that might just be my eyes playing tricks on. In terms of the head sculpt, this looks like it might be new. Now, I fully appreciate that it might not be an exactly brand new sculpt, but it's certainly different to any other Wolverines that I currently have in my collection. There's something about this sculpt that seems quite strikingly different, and I'm not sure whether he looks a little bit older than I'm used to. There seems to be a lot more definition and lines in the face, which is definitely a good thing. I'm all for that. And I do really like the paint apps that have applied to the face, so we can actually see some very subtle colouring around the tops of the eyes as well, which I think looks really good. So I think done a really nice job the paint apps. Sadly, there's no wash running through his hair. I think a blue tint would have been quite nice uh, to just create that sort of effect that we see in the comic books. But as it is, I think this works very well. Now, I absolutely love colour in my toys. The brighter, the better, especially if it's a comic book character, because we really need to see those colours pop, because these are larger than life characters, and it's all about colour in the comic books. Uh, and I think they've done a tremendous job with this. We have two base primary colours here. We have blue and yellow. They both look very, very striking. They look work really Really well contrasting against each other and this is a very strong visual. I particularly like the belt as well which is a separate piece and it's kind of a rubber piece. It's got a nice texture to it. It's kind of glossy uh, and I think this works very very well. Now it might be nitpicking but the one thing I did notice is that where the blue meets the yellow there's a little bit of bleed there. It's a little bit uneven. That was very very subtle uh, but I think this would have been massively improved if there had been a proper groove here. Something actually molded into the sculpt itself to differentiate between the two colours. Of course, there's always the perennial problem when it comes to Wolverine figures, and that is how do you approach his claws? They have decided to adopt that modern approach where they have these individual plastic pieces slid into these slots in his hands. And for the most part, I do like this approach. I think this works quite well. But one thing I have noticed is there is a tendency for them, usually the middle one to be a little bit lopsided, so they can look a little bit strange, and you spend a lot of time just trying to gently push them into place, but they always seem to want to curl back to where they were. So you have to be very careful with these. And I always have this slight fear as well that they're going to snap off. Now, that's never happened yet, so I can't really fault it for that, but it does have that slightly queasy feeling. Looking at the legs, of course, you could be forgiven for thinking that you're actually looking at a Cyclops figure here because the colours, of course, and the design is pretty much identical. However, the sculpting is ever so slightly different. Of course, these are much shorter legs. Looking at the articulation, he does, of course, have a ball joint at the top of the neck there. So he can spin his head all the way around. He can look up and down and lean left to right. There's actually a huge range of motion here, which is really good. There's also ball joints in his shoulders, so of course his arms do lift up and out a pretty healthy distance. 
but you'll also notice he has this butterfly joint as well. I love this joint. I always rave about it when I see this on a Marvel Legends figure because it just gives us so much range of movement, which is brilliant. He also has that bicep swivel as well. Of course, there are double jointed elbows so he can get that hand back to his neck, the top of his head there, which is cool. And there is, of course, a pin swivel at the wrist there. So that wrist will rotate all the way around and it will hinge forwards and backwards as well. Now, there is a straight swivel at the waist, of course. He can move all the way around, side to side. And then there is a complementary ab crunch as well. So, of course, he can lean forwards and backwards. The ball joints in the hips mean he can kick his legs out to the side. There's also an upper thigh swivel there as well. And he can kick his legs forwards, backwards. There's another double joint at the knees, so those lower legs can kick all the way back there, which is fantastic. And then you will also notice there is another swivel at the top of the boot cut there as well, which is brilliant. And then finally, of course, there is that ankle rocker there, so that foot will pivot from side to side, and it'll also hinge forwards and backwards. He's pretty light on accessories, but he does come with an extra pair of closed fists without the claws and an alternate head. I really like this alternate snarling head for me. This is the better of the two sculpts. This is the better head. This is the one I want. This Wolverine in action showing his rage there. Uh, I think this looks really very, very cool. Now, again, I'm not sure if this is a brand new sculpt, uh, but it's the first time that I've seen it in a Wolverine figure that I own. Now we can see him utilizing that butterfly joint that I love so much. So he's really able to get those arms all the way back then. It just looks super impressive. In terms of a scale comparison, here he is standing next to the Marvel Legends Forge. This is the first Forge release. I think it was from the Caliban wave. Or was it possibly the Wendigo wave? It's been quite a while anyway. Obviously, this Forge is now going to be updated as part of one of those three packs I mentioned earlier celebrating that Uncanny X-Men cover. Uh, so, of course, his colour is going to be updated because here it's a very unusual yellow they went for. It's almost orange in places, uh, but it looks very, very nice and very striking. But when you put it next to this Wolverine, which is that bright yellow, you can really see that there's a huge difference between these colours. So the updated Forge will have a consistent yellow colouring rather than this orange. But nevertheless, as you can see, Wolverine is slightly shorter than Forge as he should be. And here we can see this Wolverine next to the Love Triangle box set Wolverine from a few years ago. As you can see, they're both kind of a similar body structure. Uh, they are completely different molds, so you can see little subtleties between the two, so it's not just a straight repaint. And then we can see him standing next to the recent animated version of the character. Again, a completely different sculpt, so we can see very different mold being used for this figure. And if we put them all side by side, we can really see the differences between these. All in all then, I have to say, I really, really like this Wolverine figure. <laughs> I've always long wanted that costume, so maybe that's factoring into it, but I'm going to have to give him four stars because I'm tremendously pleased with him. Every time I see him, I'm just delighted. I think a lot of that's to do with the colouring. I really love how bright and colourful this figure is. I think he's probably the brightest Wolverine uh, we've ever had. His yellow just seems so much brighter, even more so than the animated series, which is pretty impressive. Uh, so I think it's a really bright, colourful, fun figure. I really love the joints that they give especially those butterfly joints there that really allow him to do poses like this which is really cool and striking and his articulation overall is just really really good he's one of the more articulated figures in the marvel legends line you can get him into all sorts of cool crazy action poses so he's always going to look great in displays no matter what you do with him and i just think the potential is fairly limitless really so why is he not five stars why is he missing one star there well i think really for me i've still got bugbears around the claws no matter what I do with them, they always seem to be a little bit lopsided. They don't look very evenly spread, and that can be a little bit frustrating, <laughs> to be honest. And I think when it comes to accessories, it's great that we got the extra closed hands, but maybe if we had a gripping or open palm hand, that would have been kind of cool as well. But other than that, it's a pretty solid figure, I've got to say. And it's tricky to get excited about Wolverine figures these days, because I've got that many in the Marvel Legends line that it does feel a bit excessive every time they release a new one. But at this point, I think we're fast close in the gap of all the costumes that I would want Wolverine in. This, as I said, this is one I've long wanted. Uh, I can only really think of maybe a patch version of Wolverine uh, from his Madripoor days. That would have been really cool. Uh, but other than that, I think we've got Wolverine covered now. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.